Alright, so Pro Tools books, right? Uh, so far, we've pretty much covered everything in the Pro Tools 101 book. And I went through and actually, uh, even though they're kind of bent right now, I labeled all the sections so I could get to them easier. And I've pretty much read this entire book at this point. Uh, so that's the Pro Tools 101. And Pro Tools 110, I am going to go through probably tonight and label all the different sections and uh, kind of start to look through all this and whatnot. Because uh, actually we have touched on a little bit of this uh, from lecture. So we've been moving along with the, uh, the lectures, no doubt. I'm going to bring up the audio workstation stuff. Uh, so let's see. Um, I know it's been quite a while. I'm going to start to pick up the videos uh, but it always ended up, it was, gosh, it was really hectic, actually, because there was the first week, and then, like, that Sunday, we had our first quiz and uh, lab practical for audio workstations, and then the following Thursday, or Wednesday, I think, yeah, it was Wednesday, uh, we had the midterm for critical listening. So this stuff was, like, the first two weeks were cramped into a week and a half. So that kind of sucked, and that kind of took up a lot of my time. And then there was spring break, and I was busy. There was only maybe one day that I had to really relax and do nothing uh, for the whole spring break. And now that I'm back, we're back in the swing of things. Tomorrow, or today is actually Wednesday, April 18th, uh, and I know it's been a while. I'm apologizing to myself uh, for not making videos because I really wanted to do, like, the everyday kind of thing. Uh, but life happens. What can you do? I, I like to make these videos for fun anyway, so it's cool. I've been practicing the drums, like, way more than I have since I came here. I'm pretty serious about making a drum corps, not this summer, but the next summer. So, uh, yeah, my practice videos are, like, uber long. Like, probably longer than anybody you'll find on YouTube. I mean, I can't even think of any like actual videos of the drum cores themselves that are like an hour long aside from like the one that um, <clears throat> some guy uploaded like the 2007 ESP and DCI World Championship coverage which is like an hour and a half but uh, that doesn't count because it was 12 different groups point is uh, I'm back to making the videos back into the swing of things um, uh, it's been pretty good so far so let's take a look at all the stuff we've kind of been looking and looking at in Pro Tools. Uh, basically, let's see. So we looked at uh, the first day with the Pro Tools intro. The second day of Audio Workstation was importing and editing audio. Um, and we covered uh, the basic what, like what type of uh, media can Pro Tools support. It's basically anything, anything that QuickTime supports, Pro Tools uh, supports. And we went and, you know, there's all different types of ways to import audio and different media. And, um, uh, you know, that was really it. But there, we looked at different ways to save. There's four ways to save. You have save, save as, save copy in, and then auto, the auto backup. Uh, so we learned about all that type of stuff. And the next lecture was editing and fades. So we learned basic uh, audio editing and we also learned how to do the crossfades, which is your D, F, and G on the keyboard uh, for to do them quickly. And to do the crossfades, uh, audio, there must be overlapping audio material. Um, and then with the basic editing tools, we learned about, uh, you know, you have your smart tool, which has to do with your uh, the selector tool, the grabber, the trim tool. Uh, we learned about nudging, which is, nudging is amazing. I, I, I really like the nudging uh, feature. Let's see. Uh, and then we went into the fades. Um, so, you know, we've been moving along in that. The fourth lecture was uh, time-based editing. And so this was like... Uh, identify beat was one of the big things that we, we learned about. And basically it's... Uh, you, it says here, establishes a tempo slash meter map for audio whose tempo is not known. So basically what you'll do is you'll kind of listen to the transients and you'll select, you'll count and you'll just listen to it and stop Pro Tools whenever you've gone by like two bars or four bars or whatever passage. And then you'll hit um, Command I and that's your identify beat. And you'll say, you know, I want the first beat to start 
uh, here, and so the grid will move to the start to that start point, and then the last part of of whatever your selection is will move to like you know. So let's say for example, your audio starts kind of towards the beginning of bar two, but not really. So what it'll do is it'll snap the beginning of bar two. Um, it'll make the grid perfect, basically. It's I obviously don't know know it well enough because I can't explain it in simple enough terms. Um, but I do know how to use it, so that's the important thing. And we also checked out, uh, you know, all the different, like you have your sample base, tick base, time base, uh, beat, beats bars, minutes, seconds, all those different types of things. Uh, we checked out the basics of the Pro Tools Elastic Audio. Uh, let's see. Yeah, el you know, Elastic Audio Markers, Elastic Track View, um, and then the basics of Elastic Audio. So, you know, just uh, all the time time based stuff, which is pretty darn cool in my opinion. Pro Tools is awesome. Lecture five, we checked out recording. And this one was kind of broken in half because we had to go to this uh it was a talk with Chris uh Lord Algae and uh that was pretty cool, really insightful. But the recording um lecture was I guess because it was half of just the other day. Uh, it was pretty cool. Um, there's, I think, four different record modes in Pro Tools. You have your normal record mode, your loop record mode, your destructive record mode, and uh, your punch-in record mode. So, you know, uh, we looked at all those and what they do, how they work, uh, what examples of when you would use each. Um, and with the punch record, there's the auto punch and then quick punch, which those are two separate things. Um, and we're going to be tested pretty heavily on all these record modes uh, come tomorrow, which is the uh, second Pro Tools quiz. Uh, the, and the second quiz is on lectures, um, I think, yeah, 5, 6, and 7, or 4, four 5, and 6, time-based editing, uh, recording, and then MIDI. So we also went over, after we got done talking about uh, the different record modes, because that was split up into two lectures, because we had to kind of cram a lot because of the that um, seminar thing. We also uh, started to talk about Pro Tools and MIDI. Uh, and we didn't really spend all that much time on I mean, of course, it went all the way until 5 o'clock. Um, but we didn't talk about like how MIDI works or anything. It was basically like where the MIDI stuff is in Pro Tools and what it can do with it and all that. So pretty informative, really awesome stuff. Actually, after I get done making this video, I'm going to go ahead and review all the, uh, the lecture PDFs and practice in Pro Tools because um, I actually put Mina's Pro Tools on my computer and I've, I basically I have to have her eye lock. Uh, so as long as I have this little guy here, then I can use Pro Tools on my computer and it's cool. Um, so that's awesome. And actually, uh, my stepmom, Missy, got me a full size keyboard, which is totally freaking amazing because uh, you need to have the numeric keypad to work with Pro Tools and really take advantage of it. So, you know, and it's also much more ergonomical, I guess, is where it's a lot more comfortable to have like my setup here than hunched over the computer. So basically what I got rocking here is I got the keyboard and then next to that I have the magic trackpad and then next to that I actually have an actual mouse. It's like a, one of those ball track mouse. So this is this is kind of how I have my my setup here. If you can keyboard this, this, and then the keyboard here. So uh, awesome stuff. I'm really happy with my little setup here. It's I definitely get a lot of work done, that's for sure. I'm getting the computer straightened again. Oh, so everything is going awesome with audio workstations. Feeling pretty good about it. As far as the labs go, uh, we basically, it's independent of the lectures and we're just, you know, we're going through it bit by bit. Uh, lecture one was, or lab one was the basics. Lab two was, was the editing. Uh, so it was like learning the different tools, the, the trim tool, the grabber tool, etc. Uh, let's see. Lab two, where's lab three? Oh, I don't have it on here. Um, but each lab, I mean, even though they say it's an I, I, it is independent of the lectures, it is the same stuff. So basically everything that we're learning in lecture, 
we're pretty much putting to use in the labs. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's cool. Um, I'm getting pretty fluent with it, no doubt. Uh, but obviously I need to practice and keep up with my shortcuts and whatnot because in lecture, they're really, he, you know, my instructor Jeremy, he's really big on learning the shortcuts. So I'm going to be reviewing all that tonight, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I've actually got, um, I don't have it open. I can, I can open it up though. I've got my, uh, kind of my reference sheets for all my Pro Tools quick notes. And, you know, like, there's tons of different things, like, um, bless you! Mm-hmm. So we got, like, a, like, double click highlights the entire field with the selector tool. Command H is the heal button. Um, command Option Z restores previous selection. Uh, the D, F, and G fade in, crossfade, fade out, respectively. Uh, nudging works independently of all other edit modes. Um... So the option shift three is the consolidate feature. Command R is capture, which is pretty cool. Uh, what else we got? Uh, option forward slash is the timeline control. Uh, forward slash by itself is also timeline control. So the option forward slash is when edit and timeline are unlinked. So uh, I'm kind of just naming a bunch of stuff off right now. Uh, don't don't really worry about remembering it all or anything. But just know that Audio Workstations is going really great. I'm really enjoying the class. I'm pretty serious about being Pro Tools certified. Although I'm like kind of borderline, like there'll be some days where I'll be really hyped about Pro Tools. I'm like, yeah, Pro Tools. I want to get certified. I want to be like a Pro Tools ninja, basically, you know. Uh, and then other days I'll, I'll get really interested and intrigued with sound design. Like, if you've ever seen the Transformers films, the sounds that they use to do the robot sounds and everything, amazing. Blows my mind every time I think about it. Uh, but, you know, I, there's there's a way that I can do both for sure, you know what I mean? Uh, but for the most part, with Pro Tools, it's a lot of practice, pretty straightforward, just like my drumming, you know, there's certain ways you gotta do things. Um, and with the sound design stuff, it's all fun, you know, it's just seeing what's cool and what works. Uh, but enough about the Pro Tools stuff. I'm actually going to plug in the computer. There we go. Get the computer plugged in. Power source. Sweet. Plugged in. Okay. Uh, so, critical listening. Let's get to that. All right, let me open up my folder. This class, okay, the first half, the first two weeks of critical listening, pretty lame. Not going to lie. It's a bunch of classic, you know, terms and definitions, 100 question test, midterm thing, Scantron and all that. Um, so, let's see. The first lecture, obviously, I, I'm pretty sure I talked about was the physics behind sound and stuff. Uh, the second lecture was about waves and acoustics. Uh, so, we talked about uh, periodic motion, simple harmonic motion, uh, equilibrium oscillations, linear restoring forces, uh, amplitude, frequency, and damping, wavelength, period, and frequency, sound quality, sound energy, power, intensity, pressure, uh, shock waves and impulses, lots of stuff, lots, lots of information. Um, and I mean, like I said, it was pretty boring, pretty lame, uh, just, you know, standard, typical stuff. The third lecture I thought was pretty interesting, but by the end of the four hours, I was pretty tired, pretty ready to get out of there. Uh, but the third lecture was the biology of the ear. And like I said, I actually really thought this was interesting. We talked first about the inverse square law. Um, actually, that was a review for lecture two. Uh, where is the part? I guess I'll just have to scroll through this. Um, so we talked about the anatomy of the, the auditory system and how it all works. And basically went, we worked our way from the outer ear all the way to the inner ear. And I think that the most intriguing part was definitely the inner ear um, with the uh, basilar membrane, uh, the stereocilia, and all that type of stuff, the, the cochlea and whatnot. Uh, because that's the part that, that's really important. Like, you can rupture your eardrum, and it's pretty easy to do so, no doubt. But really, the part that you have to worry about is uh, the stereocilia, which, okay, so, you know, you've probably heard, if, you, if you're if you into audio or anything, 
that uh, basically there's these little hair-like things in your cochlea that let you hear things, uh, and what happens is they get flattened. But that's kind of what it is, sort of. Basically what happens is there's this, this thing called the tympanic membrane, I think is what it was. Um, don't quote me on that, it's probably wrong. But there's this membrane thing, and then there's these tiny, tiny little things called stereocilia connected to that, and on the bottom of the stereocilia is the hair-like um, the hair-like cells that are inside of a jelly-like substance, which is called the organ of corti. So you have your jelly-like organ of corti with the hairy or the hair-like structures, then the stereocilia, which are out in the open, and then the membrane. And basically, what happens when hearing loss occurs or hearing damage is the stereocilia come unattached from the membrane, and they're just kind of chilling out there, and they're all flat and dead, and it's depressing. Um, so earplugs, have them, use them all the time. It's worth it. I actually, I explained, it was funny because the, the night that I got back home from that lecture and lab and everything, I mean, and I were laying in bed and I was kind of looking at my notes, looking over it, and she was kind of looking at it and she was like, hey, that, that looks kind of interesting, you know, can you explain it? And I was like, all right. So I walked her through basically the whole lecture and, and she kind of was like, whoa. You know what I mean? Like, that's kind of scary. So we ordered her some earplugs, like, right then and there. So, um, you know, that's that's what's up. That's awesome. I'm proud of her. Uh, taking care of the hearing is important. Especially as if you're a musician or an audio person at all. You need your hearing, man. You know what I'm saying? So take care of it because it's it, once you lose it, you can never get it back. Um, kind of like tattoos. Huh. Uh you know, once once it's gone or once it's there, it ain't never going away. And yes, I got a tattoo over spring break. It's pretty rad if you ask me. Of course, I mean, I'm the one that got that put it on me, so of course I think it's cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyway, um, what else was there? So that was the biology of the year. I mean, it's exactly what it was. We learned about the entire, the entire um, auditory system. And then uh, that was the last lecture before the midterm. And oh good lord, there were so many. There were probably over 300 terms and definitions total that we had to study, even though it was only a 100 question test. So it was, it was, it was a pain. Um, I mean, it was definitely a lot of studying, a lot of, if you're a video game fan, I, I, you use the analogy of grinding. Basically, it's, you're just copying it, and then you read it, and you copy it, and you read it. It's grinding is essentially what it is. Um, so that was like the first two or first week and a half of that class. And then we went on spring break and spring break was awesome. Me and I, my last class was on uh, that Thursday. It was actually, let me see. It was on Thursday, uh, April 5th was my last day of class, uh, which was actually, um, I had half of a lecture for audio workstations and then the Chris Lord Algae thing and then I had lab for audio workstations later that night. Uh, the next day on Friday we headed up to South Carolina and we went to like this club place downtown for her birthday and we had a really good time there. We walked around I guess downtown uh, Columbia and all that. I think it was downtown. It was a place called Five Points and so that was fun. And Saturday we went and visited uh, and I met a bunch of Mina's closest people, you know, that she that she grew up with in uh, in South Carolina. And it was like it was a full twelve hour day of nothing but visiting people. It was pretty hardcore in terms of, you know, the visiting Olympics or whatever. And then let's see, Sunday we headed up to or headed back down to Florida and we stopped at Daytona Beach. We spent a night there and it was awesome. Sorry I'm like I'm not picking my nose at it just but I uh, spent a night in Daytona, and then Monday we came back home. Tuesday I did nothing but relax. And then Wednesday Wednesday afternoon I flew out to Virginia, and I was there for my dad's retirement ceremony. And that's when I got this and uh, saw a bunch of my friends and whatnot. And it was cool. So, you know, congrats to my dad for 20 years in the Navy. He survived it. And, um... I think he's going to try to do something with uh, his welding cert certification and all that. So that's, that's what's up. And then I flew back in on Sunday night, and then there was Monday. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into the lecture that we, that we uh, did on Monday for critical listening. 
we talked about musical instruments, um, and basically we worked on identifying different musical instruments and what complex waves kind of look like and what they are, and uh, we discussed the different instrument classifications. Uh, you have areophones, chordophones, idiophones, membranophones, and then electrophones. <laughs> so those are your five categories of instruments. I guarantee you if you're a musician, no matter what instrument you play, it fits in one of those categories. And then, you know, we talked about the, the general, like, woodwinds, brass, strings, etc. We looked at a bunch of different instruments um, and their ranges and stuff. So that was a fun lecture. We got to listen to a bunch of different instrument samples and whatnot. And it was it was pretty cool. I'm looking through it. You know, we went definitely went over a lot of instruments. Uh, including guitars and you know, piano, of course, and percussion stuff, and it was a lot of fun. We looked at some world instruments, some ones I had never seen before, um, and then lastly, we went over drums, actually vocals. So we kind of talked about where the vocal cords are and stuff. <clears throat> so yeah, it was it was a pretty good lecture. I enjoyed it. Uh, it was all about musical instruments, so it was all right. And then, uh, actually, today, I had uh, critical listening earlier today, and I, I got home from lab a while ago. Um, we discussed psychoacoustics and, uh, you know, the cocktail party effect, and we looked at a bunch of different movie scenes, kind of analyzing the sounds and why they sound that way to us. Uh, uh, we talked about the auditory scene analysis, um, and again, looked at more movie things, uh, psychology of sound. Um, we listened and watched a lot of movie clips and sound clips today. Um, let's see. Uh, we discussed auditory cognition, which is uh, the psychological reaction to auditory cues. Uh, and like, if you've ever seen the video with like the maze and then the zombie face pops out. Um, like, that's a good example, because it screams, and obviously you see it, but you hear it too, and it makes you jump, and all that. Uh, we checked out this video of uh, this eight eight month old deaf baby's response to cochlear implants. Really cool. Um, and we took a break, break tizzle, and then we checked out this Bobby McFerrin video of him, and he was doing some type of, like, um, discussion thing with a bunch of, like, doctor people and all that, and it was, it was pretty cool. Oh, we also looked at um, auditory illusions. So if you like optical illusions, then you'll probably dig the auditory illusions too. Uh, you should look up, I don't know if, where or if you'll be able to find it, but check out the, the scale illusion, the shepherd's tones, the falling bells, the quickening beat, and lastly, the coolest one was the phantom words. Phantom words are pretty cool. Uh, we also listen to the tritone effect, um, and then there's a McGurk effect, and then sine wave speech, which is also pretty cool. We went through like five different examples of that, and yeah, that was about it. Um, I mean, it was a good lecture. Labs for critical listening. Basically, we follow along with this, uh, that's actually my bag. So we have this lab pack, and basically we follow along with this. And we have to, we basically the first week and a half was listening to tones, and like lab two is about superposition, and we had to like if they've got answers and questions, you know, or questions, and you got to answer it, and you got to follow the instructions and use like the test oscillators and all that. And there was a lab quiz, which kind of had to deal with everything that we did. Like then there's some more charts and stuff, more lab stuff, and Fletcher Munson chart. We actually had to make our own. Um, I mean, it's a simple one. It's a big and blocky one, but it, it got the idea across really well. And this was uh, the review sheet for the final lab. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to show it, but, you know, take a quick look. I mean... Not my fault if you pause it and look at it. Um, hopefully it won't be blurry or anything. Or I mean, hopefully it will, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Okay, anyway. Uh, and then lab five, which was on uh, Monday, was the sound of musical instruments. Basically, we had to identify different musical instruments. It was 
uh, super easy. Basically, we had to listen to loops and name the instruments that we heard. And we had to do that for uh, jazz loops, urban loops, um, rock slash blues loops, and orchestral loops, and finally, world loops. Uh, and then we also had to do a frequency range analysis. Uh, so we had to basically play this audio clip, and then we had to run uh, a bandpass filter over it to figure out the range of each instrument. So that was that was neat. And then today was a really easy lab. Like it was probably the easiest lab I've ever had here at Full Sail. Uh, basically, there were ten audio clips, and they were each uh, like clips of movies. And we literally had to write, well, what did we hear in that clip? <laughs> and we had to do that for each clip, and there were 10 clips, and we just had to write everything, so I just wrote down everything that I heard. And there was one movie, I don't know what movie it was, but it was uh, basically like, I, I guess it was like an old, like, you know, European, they had swords and armor and battle and stuff, and one guy says, I once fought two days with an arrow in my testicle, and that, that cracked me up, I thought it was really funny. And then I, yeah, so basically that was the lab I finished at like 8 o'clock, and I was home by like 8.15, and then I went and took the trash out with the skateboard, and I ended up skateboarding for like a half hour, I was all nasty and sweaty, so I came in, took a shower, and um, took care of some, I finished uh, editing the last practice video that I uploaded, which was like a freaking hour long, good lord, and um, I messaged one of my, I, actually I tracked down the uh, artist that did the design of this tattoo, and she is an artist. Well, I don't think she is like you know a professional artist. She gets paid, but she she's got um, an account on that of the Deviant Art website or whatever. And anyway, she's from down in Mexico City, and I found her on the website and I messaged her, and so we're friends on Facebook and we're talking. So I messaged her back, and um, and then uh, basically then I started to make the video here and. Mina came home, so yeah, all was well. Um, and if you haven't, uh, Mina and I basically since I've been back, we've been doing a raw food, a raw food diet because she's she's got some weight she wants to lose, and I want to get healthy again. Uh, and she's actually documenting it over on her channel, so check it out. I think it's uh, like YouTube.com/slash Mina K. Um, and I am subscribed to to her, so you can find her through my subscription if, if they show that I'm not sure but uh, yeah if you're interested in checking out uh, our you know raw food stuff then head on over to her channel I decided not to upload those videos onto mine simply because I want to keep these videos as consistent as I can uh, and I have the practice videos that I upload so I don't want to have too many things going on at once uh, so anyway guys thanks for tuning in um, and for the future me myself in the future again sorry for not being consistent because uh, this is you know these videos are kind of for me kind of for memory kind of you know however many years down the road or whatever so uh, I will attempt to make a video tomorrow night I'm about to study for Pro Tools pretty hardcore um, so yeah I will see you guys tomorrow I am out